What's on your mind is going to determine everything about your life. Whatever you have on your mind that's, that's a constant, you're going to go in that direction of life. Let's look at this real quick. I came across this really interesting stuff. I, I, I'll give you more details of this in the weeks to come because it's like, wow, this is powerful. Empirical data, empirical evidence from the American Psychological Association says this. Says this. Research shows that 75 to 98 percent of current mental, physical, emotional, and behavioral illnesses and issues come from our thought life. Now, there again, I don't have time to elaborate and give you all of the uh, substantiated data on this. But bottom line is this. It has been proven in the medical profession, in that given realm, combined with the realm of uh, psychology, that everything, so th those two fields melded together and came up with these findings, is that, look at this again, between seven, bare minimum 75% up to 98% of what's wrong with people is a due result of what's on their mind. It's a due result of their thought life. People can think themselves sick. People, can, people think themselves depressed all the time. That's right. Right. It's like, who said you were depressed? You said you were depressed. You're the one that believed that you were depressed. We can think ourselves happy or we can think ourselves sad. Just, just depending upon the direction and the source of our thought life. What are we thinking upon? What is continually on our mind? Now, we're going to look here in a few minutes that these certain things should always be on your mind. As a child of God, they should always be on your mind. So, I mean, we know this because we know what the Word says about the power of your thought life. I mean, this scripture alone, as a man, as a person thinks, so are they. You become what you think. There again, you think you're sick, you're going to become sick. You, th you, you think you have problems, you will have problems. Even if, if there's hardly a problem in this situation you are experiencing, if you think the problem is greater than the problem itself, that problem becomes greater because it's now in your mind and it affects you. So whatever is on your mind, whatever becomes, becomes a continuum in your thought processes, it's going to affect you. It'll affect how you live. It'll affect how you act. It'll affect how you think. It'll affect you physiologically. It will affect you emotionally. It will affect you relationally. It will affect every single area of your life. And there again, the medical profession of, of decades and decades of research, and from a psychological perspective, it has been proven, bare minimum 75%, up to 98%. So we do need to think good thoughts. We do need to have an understanding there again of the negativity from negative thinking. So we need to make sure whatever is always on our mind that it's going to be good, right? Aren't you glad the Bible already has the answer? Aren't you glad it already has everything you need? So Philippians 4, we're going to start at verse 6 for what it's worth, okay? If you want to follow along, Philippians 4, verse 6, and to set up the ensuing verses here in just a moment. Verse 6 says, be careful or not to worry. You may have a version. How many of you have a translation there that says, a version that says, don't worry? Instead of be careful for nothing, that literally means don't worry about anything. Now, where does worry come from? Your thought life. So it's, oh, it comes from the devil. No, it does not. Worry does not come from the devil. It comes from you. You are the progenitor of worry within your own life, within your own mind, within your own brain, within your own life frame of reference. You are the progenitor. You are the purveyor, you're the progenitor and the purveyor of worry. The devil isn't. I, I, I just totally erased your theology, didn't I, in that regard? See, in many regards, the devil doesn't have to mess with some Christians because they're messing with themselves bad enough. 
He doesn't really have to do much to them. He said, oh, no, no, they got it. You know, no, no, no. They're, they're, they, they, they got it down pat. I don't even need to help them out. Because we can be our worst enemy. We can be our worst critic. We can be our worst at fault. The fault, dear Brutus, lies within thee. But anyway, a little Shakespeare there too. So you never know what you're going to get when you come here, but you know you're going to get a well-rounded, uh, this, this, this plethora of, of, of stuff. But anyway, anyway, we are the ones that start the worry. Now, the Bible says don't worry about anything. So be careful for nothing. I'm reading from the King James Version. It simply means don't worry about anything. This will help you not to worry. This will replace worry, actually. It goes on to say, but in everything by prayer and supplication. Supplication is a definitive word for, you could say, intercession or strong, earnest prayer, right? So instead of worry, why don't you pray about it? You ever notice that? You ever notice this? I'm sure you have. You've mastered this. I'm sure you have. And that is, you can't worry about something if you're praying. If you're praying about something, you can't simultaneously be worrying about it too. So whatever you start worrying about, just start praying about it. So inversely speaking, if you're worried about something, that probably means you ain't praying about it. And whose fault is that? Ain't God's, ain't mine, it's our own fault. If we're worrying about anything, it is our own fault. I did, I don't know, a couple years ago, I did a series just on worry. And I, and I, and I proved to everyone, and most everyone knew this, so by all means, but you know, worry is sin. For a child of God, worry is actually a sin. It's an indictment against God. It's almost a slap in the face of God. So anyway, don't worry. Tell somebody, don't worry about anything. Now say this, God, help me to never worry about anything from this day forward. And there again, it originates in the mind, guys. It originates in the mind, the soul, the spirit, right? Because there again, there's that spiritual connective tissue within those three entities I just mentioned. So don't worry about anything, but in everything, pray about it and also give thanksgiving. While you're praying, thank God that he's already going to give you the answer. Thank God he's going to turn it around. Thank God that he's going to give you what you are just asking for. Amen? Praying people are very thankful people also. Let your requests be made known unto God. Tell him what you need. Now, he knows what you have needed before you ask, but he's, he's waiting for you to ask so that he can show you he is willing and able to meet you in every area of your point of need. For more information about our teaching resources, visit our website at ciclive.com.